Companies use one of two systems to account for inventory, a perpetual or periodic inventory system. In this video, we will focus on recording purchases under a perpetual inventory system. Companies may purchase inventory for cash or credit. They normally record purchases when they receive the goods from the seller. Every purchase should be supported by business documents that provide evidence of the transaction. A purchase invoice indicates the total purchase price as well as other relevant information such as credit and freight terms. Under the perpetual inventory system, companies record purchases of merchandise for sale in the inventory account by increasing or debiting inventory and decreasing or crediting cash. If, however, the vendor extends credit, look for credit terms, then we would increase or credit accounts payable. Not all purchases are debited to inventory. Companies record purchases of assets acquired for use and not for resale, such as supplies and equipment, as increases to specific asset accounts rather than to the inventory account. For example, to record the purchase of office supplies, we would increase or debit supplies. The sales agreement should indicate who, the seller or the buyer, is to pay for transporting the goods to the buyer's place of business. When a public carrier like a trucking company transports the goods, the carrier prepares a freight bill in accordance with the sales agreement. Freight terms are expressed as either FOB shipping point or FOB destination. The letters FOB mean free on board, so FOB shipping point means that the seller places the goods free on board the carrier and the buyer pays the freight cost. Alternatively, FOB destination means that the seller places the goods free on board to the buyer's place of business and the seller pays the freight. I prefer to think of it as FOB shipping point means the buyer pays the freight cost and ownership of the goods passes to the buyer when the public carrier accepts the goods from the seller at the shipping point. Whereas FOB destination, the seller pays the freight cost and ownership of the goods remain with the seller until the goods reach the buyer or the destination. For example, if the sales invoice indicates that FOB shipping point, then the buyer pays the freight cost. These costs are considered part of the cost of purchasing inventory. Freight costs incurred by the seller are an operating expense. When the buyer pays the transportation cost, these costs are considered part of the cost of purchasing inventory. The reason is inventory cost should include all the costs to acquire the inventory, including freight necessary to deliver the goods to the buyer. The company recognizes these costs as cost of goods sold when the inventory is sold. As a result, the account inventory is increased or debited for the freight cost. For example, if Sox Stereo pays public freight company $150 for freight charges on May 6, the entry would be a debit to inventory for $150 and a credit to cash for the same amount. In contrast, Freight costs incurred by the seller are an operating expense to the seller. These costs increase an expense account titled freight out or sometimes called delivery expense. For example, if the freight terms on the invoice had required that PW Audio Supply, the seller, pay the $150 freight charges, the journal entry on May 4th would be a debit to freight out for $150 and a credit to cash for the same amount. A purchaser may be dissatisfied because the goods are damaged or defective, they may be of inferior quality, 
or they simply do not meet the purchaser's specifications. In these cases, the purchaser may return the goods to the seller for credit if the sale was made on credit or for a cash refund if the purchase was for cash. This transaction is known as a purchase return. Alternatively, the purchaser may choose to keep the merchandise if the seller is willing to grant a reduction of the purchase price. This transaction is known as a purchase allowance. I have the perfect example to illustrate a purchase allowance. Several years ago, I purchased new kitchen appliances and I have a general rule that no major deliveries or services should occur on Mondays. Think about how you feel on a Monday morning. I made an exception and I had my appliances delivered on a Monday morning first thing and they literally dragged my refrigerator to my kitchen. As a result, it had a ding in the right hand corner. So I had a decision to make. Do I keep the damaged one or do I ask for a new one? In the end, I negotiated with LG and they sent me a sizable check. Think about this from LG's point of view. They are willing to offer an allowance to their customer, which was me, because the last thing LG wants is to bring my defective refrigerator back to their warehouse and then hire two more people to bring me a new one. Let's assume that Sock Stereo returned goods costing $300 to PW Audio Supply on May 8th. Sock Stereo would record the following entry, debit, or decrease accounts payable for $300 and credit or decrease inventory for $300. Because Sock Stereo increased inventory when the goods were received, inventory is decreased or credited when the business returns the goods. If Sock Stereo chose to keep the goods after being granted a $50 allowance, a reduction in the price, it would simply reduce or debit accounts payable and reduce or credit inventory for $50. The credit terms of a purchase on account may permit the buyer to claim a cash discount for prompt payment. The buyer calls this cash discount a purchase discount. This incentive offers advantages to both parties. The purchaser saves money and the seller is able to shorten the operating cycle by converting its accounts receivable into cash sooner. The credit terms specify the amount of the cash discount, the time period during which it is offered, and the length of time in which the purchaser is expected to pay the full invoice price. For example, if credit terms are 210 net 30, this means that a 2% cash discount may be taken on the invoice price, less or net of any returns or allowances, if the payment is made within 10 days of the invoice date. That's the discount period. Otherwise, the invoice price, less any returns or allowances, is due 30 days from the invoice date. The credit terms we will use in this class specify the amount of the cash discount, the discount period, and the length of time in which the purchaser is expected to pay the full invoice price. Alternatively, the discount period may extend to a specified number of days following the month in which the sale occurs. For example, 110 end of month means that a 1% discount is available if the invoice is paid within the first 10 days of the next month. When the seller elects not to offer a cash discount for prompt payment, credit terms will specify only the maximum time period for paying the balance due. For example, the credit terms may state the time period as net 10 end of month. This means that the buyer must pay the net amount within the first 10 days of the next month. When an invoice is paid within the discount period, the amount of the discount decreases inventory. Because the merchandiser records inventory at its cost and by paying within the discount period has reduced that cost. 
To illustrate, Sox Dario pays the balance due of $3,500 on May 14th, which is the last day of the discount period. The payment of $3,500 is the gross invoice price of $3,800 less the purchase return of $300. Since the credit terms are 210 net 30, the cash discount is $70. This is calculated by taking the balance due of $3,500 and multiplying that by the discount of 2%. On May 14th, the journal entry to record the payment decreases or debits accounts payable by the amount of the balance due, $3,500, and it reduces or credits inventory by the $70 discount, and then reduces or credits cash by the net amount owed. And again, in this case, it's $3,430, and that is simply the difference between the balance due and the discount that is taken. If Sox Stereo failed to take the discount and instead made a full payment of $3,500 on June 3rd, they would reduce or debit accounts payable and reduce or credit cash for $3,500. The following T account provides a summary of the effect of the previous transactions on inventory. Sox Dario originally purchased $3,800 worth of inventory for resale. It then returned $300 of goods and paid $150 in freight cost. It also received a $70 discount off the balance owed because it paid within the discount period. This results in a balance in the inventory account of $3,580. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in another document.